Jason Phillips from Auto Appraise. I'm down in Bloomington, Illinois today. We're checking out a 1967 Shelby GT350. It just dropped about 25 degrees in four, almost five hours going through the car. I've got underbody video that's separate from this video because my camera died, it was on so long. But it's an original Survivor underbody. Uh, no major collision damage to report. Some minor damage to the to the right rear, uh, left rear rail rather. Vehicle been reportedly owned by the same guy since 1971. It's an original interior. That Ford duct tape is a rare scene item. Got some splits in the original strato bucket uh, material, but you can see the blue stitching here indicating some originality. Original steering wheel. Trunk's in pretty good shape. We're going to fire it up take it for a cold ride. Started it up cold. It was 71 degrees inside. Those solid lifters churning. There was no smoke on cold startup. Reverse lights were working, brake lights, turn signals all working. Didn't get to see them inside yet, but there they are. Original steering wheel is showing some deterioration, but otherwise in good shape. The emblems on the car look nice all the way around. This is a aftermarket shifter knob. Hey, put your foot on the brake. Wipers appear to be sweeping. Turn signals are uh, working, both inside and out. That wiper sweeps a little bit uh, behind the other one. I've seen that happen before. Uh, horn appears to be in app. Cold oil pressure is about 50 pounds. The engine's been reportedly rebuilt. Okay, we're gonna hit down the road. It's kind of wet out and slippery out, so we're not gonna be able to get on it too much.
that in now. All right. You should get something to run, that's for sure. Yeah. That was kind of fun. We should do that again. Can you roll that window up a little more? Or is that oh, just yeah. you doing that? We have a bit of an air leak going on. very good at cold start. You can hear those uh, solid lifters turning away like they should. No evidence of a miss. Uh, no obvious smoking or anything like that. The car did not appear to have any active leaks after it sat on the hoist for over four hours. And uh, functional it is, that's for sure. Coming up on about a three and a half mile, probably four mile test drive by the time we wrap it up. Oil pressure's holding up good. Temperature seems to be hanging in there. We'll let it run a few more minutes before we shut her down. Uh, Jason Phillips from Auto Appraise. 1967 Shelby GT350. Original car, original owner since 1971. Keep going. With some, uh, with an older 1984 repaint, it still looks pretty good. Car is in the registry. Just gone about another mile, hitting some uh, rough bumps on this divided highway, and the car the car holds the road good, considering it's got all original suspension. Takes the bumps real nice. Finishing up, we're going to end up with about uh, 30, 35 pounds of oil pressure. Temperature still hanging in there nicely. 80763, I think we put about five miles on it. It's a very good looking Survivor. There's really uh, not a lot to complain about. Seats have held up pretty well. Driver's seat and that door panel wear are really the most extreme wear. Day coated seat belts are correct. Parking brake works, lights are working. The body had a uh, fairly good magnetic adhesion all the way around. There's a few, there's a few blems to discuss. Touches up, touch ups and chips and paint. I'm telling you, buddy. I see all the lights are working. There is one outer brake light out, but the reverse lights are working. There's some chips here touched up in the bumper. This bumper had been changed. Light collision in the rear caused a little bit of a bend in the left rear rail and that's been repaired with a piece of flat steel welded onto it. But uh, magnets and a digital paint meter hold up pretty nicely on this car. Correct Shelby 5 spokes, got the correct uh, spare, matching spare inside. Incorrect exhaust. The uh, gold is worn off on some of these emblems. They're not quite as gold as they were, and of course, they're, uh, the original ones weren't as gold as the aftermarket uh, units that you see. Last little look at the uh, engine. Assembly date 7D20, 7D20. It does not have an original yellow top coil or the Bakelite connectors has the 19 and 20 stamps on the left and right heads. Got the correct Cobra intake with the uh, raised letters. Cobra raised letter uh, valve covers. A 10 fin, I believe. Power steering, power brakes, AM radio, fold down rear seat cart. But the engine uh, sounds good. It's gone through a rebuild. Car, a later car in the series. 
with a Z scribed into the uh, into the Shelby tag. The rivets on that tag may have been uh, removed and re-adhered at one time. Well, original glass looks pretty good. There's a few small stone pecks in the windshield, but no major bullets. A few hairline scratches on the glass. Original chrome is in pretty decent shape. Some cracking in the original windshield molding. These belt moldings weren't pulled off when the car was repainted. Glass was not pulled out, so there's a little bit of overspray here inside the window frames. The uh, stripes were cleared over. Early Centauri job. 1984, the very beginnings of base clear paint. Uh, the rear condition doesn't, uh, the, the collision possible uh, collision damage up here does not seem to be uh, adversely affecting the way the car sits, looks, or lines up. Hey, they, uh, they went fast in the day and they had wrecks. Okay, have a great day.